Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Film Bites, a short uh, video. Well, they're, they're short uh, videos on uh, my Blu ray collection and DVD collection, highlighting uh, either a set or uh, an individual film and talking more about the package of it and the uh, no technical details and not a lot about the. Um, uh, about the film as well it's just more about the presentation uh of of the collection and i just i thought i'd do it that way technical details you can find and i'm i'm not up to the really uh heavy duty technical details of films um but uh, this uh this week i'll be doing uh kino's massive set of fritz lang uh and it's uh it's it's, it's in a slip case but we'll go through a few things here. You got a little booklet. It's a little booklet. Uh, Kino is a lot of times a little <sighs> sparse on their extras. This really warranted a huge booklet with a lot of essays in it. Um, but yeah, sadly we didn't get it. But the essay that's in here is a good essay by Tom Gunning, uh, who's a film scholar and he writes very well. Uh, also is a listing of the surviving silent films. All the surviving silent films that uh, Fritz Lang directed are in this set. And then there's a list of the surviving uh, films that he wrote. Only one is in this set. I'm not sure why they chose that. I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't come across the reason for that yet. But let's just look at the set. It's it's a nice size. It's a nice presentation. It's 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 like a book. Uh, there is a downside to it though. But I I do like the presentation of this. And like you know it, it's 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 got the it's got um, on the left side. There's always either artwork or a still from the film. And then there is a slot in the cardboard that's indented that the Blu-ray is in set. Uh, I do. If I didn't say this is a Blu-ray set, uh, and the downside of this is having the cardboard and the and the uh, Blu-ray touching the uh, paper and the cardboard. So every time you take it out, you can't do it easily. It it can get damaged. Blu-rays, thankfully, a little more hardier than uh, DVDs, and at least this is in set. So when it does get uh, in transportation, they don't pop out um, like they do a lot of times, the older ones that, uh, that did this kind of thing. But anyway, we'll go through each one. These are not chronologically uh, done here uh, in, in this set. But the first one is uh, the Spiders uh, from 1919 to 1920. And it's it, it was a serial, uh, but it's it's very interesting. Uh it was yeah written and directed by Fritz Lang, and uh, um, yeah it's got all like the music composed and performed by Ben Modell, uh, restoration and video uh, remastering, um, uh, an archive in Prague, uh, and so forth. There's there's it, it's 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 a good transfer for this if I remember right. Uh, in the 1919, this is the his first surviving film called Harakiri. Harakiri. Uh, 1919, and uh, it's tinted, and it was directed by Fritz Lang, uh, screenplay by Max Junik, uh, and also on here is The Wandering Shadow, which is 1920. Uh, the Wandering Shadow, um, no, that that is one of his director. No, sorry, Harry Kiri is. Uh, sorry, I I've forgotten here. There's one of these that is. Uh, no, no, no. They, they, these are both directed by him. Sorry. Uh, the Wandering Shadow is 1920, uh, and it's directed by uh, Fritz Lang. It's uh, produced by Joe May, uh, which also produced, uh, well, actually made uh, the another film that he uh, Fritz Lang wrote, uh, which was The Indian Tomb. Uh, he later remade it in this in the late 50s or 60s. But yeah, those, they're both on these, Hirakiri and The Wandering Shadow. Uh, then we got uh, Four Around the Woman, which is 1921. This one I have not seen yet, so this this will be uh, a nice uh, uh, thing to watch. Um, 
yeah, 1920, uh, and I'll show the, well, I didn't show the other one. See, that's, that's the artwork there for the Hirakiri and the Wandering Shadow. Uh, then we got Four Round the Woman, uh, still from the film. And then we got Destiny, uh, which is 1921. Um, it's an interesting, very interesting film. And it's got auto commentary by film historian Tim Lucas and restoration uh, demonstration footage. And it's got a 2016 re-release trailer if anybody's interested uh, for this. And this was... Uh, uh, there's German intertitles on this one with optional uh, English uh, titles. Uh, the other ones don't say they'll probably be replaced. They won't be German. Um, it'll be English intertitles, I assume. I, like I say I haven't played these. Um, but yeah, that's so Destiny. Uh, it's uh, Germany 1921. And uh, let's see here. Let me get back because I'm not sure if I showed the... So there's the look of it. And then next we've got Dr. Mabuse, uh, which is on two, uh, The Gambler. And it's uh, on two Blu-rays. And there's the a still at the bottom and a poster. And that's 1922. And uh, there's special features, a uh, story behind Dr. Mabuse. It's 52 minutes long, three-part documentary exploring the musical score by uh, Zimmerman uh, and a career of novelist Norbert Jacques and an analysis of the film. I've got the, the novel here, um, and I will be doing a book to film eventually on this, which could be interesting. Uh, this is the, uh, the screenplay by uh, Theo von Harbo. Uh, he eventually married, uh, Fritz Lang eventually married uh, Thea von Harbaugh. He was married to another woman earlier, and she died under mysterious circumstances being shot uh, by a gun. And there's rumors, uh, no one knows the full truth, that it could have been uh, Fritz Lang that uh, shot her. Uh, because he, the story is that he came home and found them basically uh, in bed. Uh, together, his wife and Thea von Harbo. So the idea is that he shot his wife and then went off with Thea von Harbo uh, until she became a Nazi and stayed and he divorced her and she stayed in Germany when he fled. But there's the mythology around him. He kept saying that, you know, basically Goebbels asked him to be head of uh, propaganda film uh, for the Nazi regime. And he just said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then went home and buggered off and left the country. Not really that. It didn't happen that way. But he liked having a, uh, a mystery and mythology around him. Anyway, back to the films. Then we got the Nebelingen, uh, which is like five hours long. Uh, and on two Blu-rays here as well. And the special features are The Legacy of the Nebelingen, a 68-minute documentary on the making and restoration of the film by Guido... Uh, Altendorf and Anka uh, Vinkering, a newsreel footage taken on the newsreel footage taken on the set, and the screenplay was by Fritz Lang and Thea von Harbo. And then his most notable one is Metropolis, um, and that's uh, 1927. And the special features are uh, Voyage to Metropolis, 50-minute documentary on the making and restoration of the film, interview with Paula Felix Didler, a Didler a curator of the Muse, uh, Museo de Sin Buenos Aires, where previous missing footage was discovered. Yeah, so they've got some other footage that was, uh, uh, was found in Buenos Aires. Uh, and then we got Spies. Very, very nice poster there with the lights, like Art Deco look to it. 1928, and uh, screened by, by Thea Von Harbel. Uh Piano score by Neil Brandt. Uh, a very, very uh, good um, accompanist uh, to silent films. Spies, a small film with lots of action. 
a documentary by Guido Altendorf and Anke Winkling. Uh, original German, German theatrical uh, trailer. Uh, and it's courtesy of Australian Film Museum, Vienna. Or Austrian, oh, Australian. Austrian Film Museum, Vienna. And then we got Women in the Moon, another sort of art deco I really like that look. And uh, that's 1929. Uh, piano score by Yevier Perez de Apache. I can't pronounce his name, sorry. Woman in the Moon, the first scientific science fiction film. A documentary on the making of the film, 14 minutes. And then we've got The Plague of Florence, and that's the one that he wrote but did not direct. Uh, that's from 1919. Um, it was directed by Otto Rippert and screenplay by Fritz Lang. It's based on The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, that one I've not seen yet either. So, But yeah, um, as you can see, it's quite short on, on, um, on extras. I love commentaries and it'd be nice to have full length, multiple commentaries on each one. Uh, but this is sort of the biggest set that there is, I think, of Fritz Lang, other than maybe something, uh, in Germany, uh, which, uh, sometimes are, are good to get if they have English subtitles, but a lot of them don't. And then the, the extras will be in German and without subtitles and the text of the book a lot of time is in German. And if you can speak German and read German, you're fine. But if you don't, then you're missing something. So yeah, so there's Fritz Lang, The Silent Films. Um, a fabulous box set, but lacking uh, in some ways. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to have a full bells and whistles one. Um, and then there's the picture of uh, the false Mariah or Maria. Uh, from Metropolis Dancing. Uh, yeah, so that's it. And it's 12, 12 discs. Uh, it's it's pricey, but you can if you look around, you'll be able to get it on sale, uh, hopefully. Take care, BookTube.